Welcome on board the news track. I'm Rahul Kaval. Two surveys submitted before a Varanasi court make clear that the surveyors believe that there existed a temple at the site of the Gyanvyapi Mosque. What happens legally from here on? The matters in the court, not just locally in Varanasi, but also at the Supreme Court tomorrow. That's what we'd look at very carefully on the news track tonight. Two surveys, one clear hint. Is Shivling the proof in Gyanwapi Mosque? Full final survey report accessed. Report mentions oval structure. Findings spark big debate. What happens next? Big focus on News Track. Here's a look at the headlines we are tracking tonight. Supreme Court defers Gyan Vyapi Mask case till hearing uh, tomorrow at 3 pm asks the Varanasi court not to proceed with the trial today. After Ayodhya and Kashi, Hindu glare on Mathura's Krishna Ran Janbhumi site, police seeking removal of the Shahi Eidgah Mosque admitted in a lower court. Supreme Court jails Navjot Singh Sidhu for a year in the 1988 road rage case. The cricketer turned politician had battered a 65 year old to death. Two days, two blows for the Gandhis after Hardik Patel dumped the Congress. Now, former Punjab chief Sunil Jakhar joins the BJP, says quit the Congress because of its divisive politics. Asuli toot jai. Jam. हम अपने सिद्धांत से हट जाएं, अपनी आइडियोलॉजी से हट जाएं, तो मैं समझता हूं, this is the right time to have a rethink. Death toll in Assam floods rises to nine. Situation worsens across the state. BJP neta slammed for piggyback right during a flood review. Survey reports both in court, both mentioning an oval shaped shivling structure in the Gyan Vyapi Mosque complex in Varanasi. The 12 page report, uh, both by the SACT Commissioner Ajay Mishra and the final one by Advocate uh, Commissioner Vishal Singh, are with India today. They refer to Hindu motifs being visible the lotus, the trishul, the damru, the deities. The big question is what happens next? Worshippers are looking at the court and seeking clarity. A shivling, lotus motif, damru, trishul, symbols associated with Lord Shiva and more signs of Sanatan culture. These are the big findings of the survey report submitted by court-appointed Special Advocate Commissioner Vishal Singh. The 10-page report has been submitted in the Varanasi court along with three boxes of evidence which include pictures and videos. जो नक्शे हैं वो भी आप लोगों ने समझ जी जी एकदम जितनी फोटोग्राफ्स थी और वीडियोग्राफी हुई है दौरान कमीशन कार्रवाई अंडर सील है वो हम लोगों ने सबमिट कर दिया है तो ये कितनी फोटोग्राफ्स होगी किस तरह की फोटो ये जानकारी नहीं है जो जो फोटोग्राफ हुई है सारी चीजों की फोटोग्राफी कराई गई है सब सबमिट कर दिया गया है a second survey report by SACT Commissioner Ajay Mishra is also now with the Varanasi court. It also mentions four Hindu idols, fragmented deity, debris of temple, walls inscribed with Hindu motifs and an image of the Sheshnag. 
मुझे देखने से मतलब वही प्रतीत हुआ कि ये नाक का जो है ऊपर ही टूटा हुआ फन टाइप का था किस तरह के अवशेष खंडित हैं वो क्या दिखा रहे हैं वो मंदिर के मतलब कुछ जो है ऐसा है कि टुकड़े हैं मूर्तियां टाइप की हैं जो है वो आपको देखने से लगेगा कि नहीं हाँ ये किसी मंदिर का ही अवशेष है मंदिर का अवशेष लगता है जी The survey findings accessed exclusively by India Today clearly suggests the presence of the temple at the Gyanwapi Mosque complex. The findings are being hailed by the Hindu side. Hari nishchit roop se maang yehi hai ki wo shivling hai, wo shivling ki khodai kar kar aur bhi chijon ko hamare trust ko samarpit kar diya jaye, de diya jaye taaki hum uska bhog raag pujan bhajan kirtan. आर्चन ये कर सके देखिए सर्वे तो माननीय न्यायालय ने आदेश दिया था उस अनुसार जो है कि पक्ष विपक्ष दोनों लोग की सहमति से अच्छे से हुआ है और अच्छे से हुआ है पूरा न्यायालय को सौंप दिया गया अब न्यायालय जो भी न्याय करेगा वो पूरा विश्वास है कि सत्य की जीत होगी बट द लीगल बैटल इज फार फ्रॉम ओवर द सुप्रीम कोर्ट विल नाउ हियर द ज्ञान वापी केस ऑन फ्राइडे एट थ्री पी एम इट हैज फॉर नाउ पुट स्टे ऑन द प्रोसीडिंग्स इन द वाराणसी कोर्ट proceedings before the varanasi court are going on i have told you that the application which we have filed that the muslim side will also take some time to file their objections to our application mr abhay yadav had mentioned the, before the court that they need some time to file their objections so after all these formalities and document work are complete the matter will proceed further for hearing today it so happened that the, uh, the counsel for the plaintiff uh mr jain uh, was unwell so in the meanwhile the proceedings which are going on should not continue so this is being accepted by the court and the court is directed that uh, uh the proceedings uh, so far uh, till tomorrow is confirmed the heated courtroom battle over the gyanwapi mosque has left the locals divided इस रिपोर्ट में क्या निकला है आपको क्या पता अरे रिपोर्ट में हमारे भोलेनाथ निकले हैं नंदी बैल निकला त्रिशूल निकला है वहाँ प्रसारण चिन्ह निकला है तालाब निकला है सब कुछ है वहाँ ठीक तो जो भी कोर्ट का निर्णय होगा आपको मान्य होगा जी हाँ मानेंगे कोर्ट का निर्णय मानेंगे और दूसरी बात ये भाई कह रहे हैं कि यह शिवलिंग है तो हंसने मजाक वाली बात है वहाँ फुहारा था फुहारा है और फुहारा ही रहेगा ऑल आईज नाउ ऑन द कोर्ट ऑन द इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ वट the findings have been specially about the shivling the trishul the damru sringar gauri uh, idol and also some other idols of sanatan dharm as the report insists now these reports the videos and the photographs were submitted in at least three boxes to the court and now all eyes on court so what happens next The sensational survey findings are now with the Varanasi court. Will it impact the hearing in Supreme Court too? With Samad Shivastav and Gaurav in Varanasi and Anisha Mathur in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. What we have now is a situation where there are two survey reports which have found signs of Sanatan culture uh, inside the Gyan Vyapi Mosque, whether it's a lotus. a damru a trishul the shivling itself and therefore this is now being used to say that the gyan vyapi mosque was originally a temple what should the supreme court do should it allow for the case to go on in varanasi or should it invoke the right to worship act places of worship act and say that you can't change the religious character of a place now there is compelling evidence there is a demand which is being made and if you don't accept this demand could there potentially be a law and order problem how do you deal with this very sensitive situation joining us on this broadcast representing the ruling bharti janta party its spokesperson gaurav bhatia squaring off against him we've got jayant bhushan senior advocate from the supreme court sanjay hegde uh, a senior advocate in the supreme court and varun singh joins us who practices in the supreme court as well I want to go across first and foremost to Gaurav Bhatia for a perspective of how the government of the day perceives these two survey reports that have been submitted before a Varanasi uh, court which say that there are clear signs of a temple existing at the side of the Gyan Vyapi Mosque what are you from a BJP perspective hoping the Supreme Court will do in court tomorrow
Rahul, first of all, uh, if you ask me about the government perspective, I'm not the spokesperson for the government, but yet I would tell you this is a matter pertaining to a suit. There are two parties, the plaintiff and the defendant. And the government has a vulnerable responsibility of acting fairly to both the parties in the suit. Yes, I would tell you one thing for sure, being the spokesperson of the Bharatiya Janata Party, that uh, you have an apprehension of law and order situation. We have a very strong chief minister in Yogi Adityanath Ji, and let's not forget that so far things have been good, and every citizen of the country should abide by what the court says, be it the Supreme Court, High Court or the Trial Court. And let me also remind you that in 2019, when the Ayodhya verdict came, you know, the situation was handled very well by the government then and people accepted the verdict and that's the way it should be in a democracy like ours, which is governed by rule of law. Now coming to the point, as to what uh, would happen in the matter you asked me. You know, I think we need to respect a matter which is sub judice before the highest court of the country. And it pains me as a citizen, not just as the spokesperson of the Bharati Janata Party, when we have a former chief minister like Akhile Jada who comes out and makes a very irresponsible remark today itself, saying, Kahi bhi patthar rakh do, aur lal jhanda laga do, to mandir ban jata hai. You know, he forgets he's talking about Kashi. Okay, so about I'll Kashi. leave the politics this, on the side for the moment. Statement. I'm focusing on the matter of law. Yes. And I want to ask uh, Sanjay Hegde about, yes. you know, you, you've said earlier you can't play crystal gazer for what may happen in court. That is true. But given the weight of evidence that's now been submitted before the Varanasi local court, does, what kind of impact could that potentially have on how this matter is viewed legally, Two reports suggesting there are very clear signs of not just the shivling, but also multiple other aspects associated closely with the Hindu culture. First and foremost, I would expect the court to take grave exception to how it, the report submitted to it has come out on the media. You must remember that the previous commissioner got sacked. There is a stay on proceedings in the Supreme Court. These reports by the commissioners are meant to be confidential. The commissioner is supposed to have given it in a sealed cover. Who unsealed the cover and gave it to the media? Well, there is a question there. Then, secondly, the point is that there is the 1991 Act, which clearly states that such suits can't go on. The Supreme Court on the last hearing indicated that the question of the maintainability of the suit itself would have to be decided first. That is, the se uh, Order 7, Rule 11 application filed by the defendants would have to be first decided before any further proceedings could go on. Uh, the, uh, a final order could not be passed on two days because the advocate on the Hindu side was not available. We do not know whether he would be in a position to come to court tomorrow and what the Supreme Court would do on the last day before the court closes for vacations. However, this kind of exposure in the media of reports which ought to be confidential and confidentially submitted to the court itself would bring the entire report under question. Okay, you're saying that the report is under question, Varun Singh, that it should not have been leaked, it's supposed to be a sealed cover report, it almost suggests that the commissioners were wanting to build a certain mahal, a certain narrative, so that in, in some ways seeking to uh, push the court's hand on what should be done and therefore uh, Sanjay Hegde uses that to make the argument that the court should dismiss this report. Well, actually it will go very much uh, heavily against uh, the report itself for the simple reason that uh, now that the commissioner is also being sacked, the validity, the, you know, there was already an allegation of biasness against that person. So by virtue of doing all this, by making a case stronger for one side or the other, uh, I think it, it probably will go against only uh, for the simple reason that uh, now the they have more, one party will have more to say on the issues of biasness. But as 
uh, Sanjay sir rightly pointed out the question at first which has to be decided and which will be decided by the Supreme Court is Qua Section 4 and Section 4 of the Places of Worship Act where whether any suit can be maintainable or not. But let me just uh, point out one interesting fact that the Places of Worship Act is already under question because it carves out an exception for two uh, worship places and says that besides those two, everything else, uh, all, all the other suits will abate. And for that particular reason, the, uh, the validity has been questioned that why have they carved out an exception for two, two religious places, whereas the other places have uh, cannot have any suit going on. Having said that, that is one part of the debate. The other part of the debate is that Section 4.3 has an exception, which I, which I, which I hear in it's in the public domain. There's been read out to support the case of people who have filed the suit, stating that any places which are covered under the Ancient Monuments Act, those those suits are uh, are except are uh, you know are come out of the the Act of Places of Worship Act, and therefore those suits may lie but that that also is another dichotomy because the ancient monuments act also bars civil suits so i don't know how uh, what okay what kind aman of... lekhi do you buy the argument put out by sanjay hegde and by varun singh that because the commissioners seem to have leaked this report wanting to build a public narrative this will go against them in the supreme court because this was meant to be a sealed cover report and you can't leak to the public and to the media uh, a report which was given to you in confidence to send only back to the courts well it's a question of propriety and of, of course by the fact that it's leaked the uh, issue of propriety does reach the center stage and in fact questions may arise as to how it has happened However, that element of surprise or the case of bias is something I don't buy because as far as this particular place of worship is concerned, the historical fact which stare us in the face and history which is replete with incidents. It is not in any way surprising that in a mosque, uh, pieces of temple, in fact the wall or even a shivling is found. So the fact that the local commissioner's report has actually shown that something actually exists is not something which should take us by astonishment and surprise because it is something which was more or less to be presumed to have happened. That said, uh, the matter before the court, uh, the courts are aware of how things actually unravel and proceed. The mere fact that the report has actually uh, been leaked would not in any way affect what the court will do. Uh, the issue here is, however, the 1991 Act. Uh, the 1991 Act is absolutely clear. And I personally think has, it serves a, a, a laudable social purpose. And uh, as far as the question of scrutiny as to the status or entitlement for probe to actually ascertain whether it's a place of worship belong to one community or other is something which should be beyond judicial scrutiny. Uh, I'm not saying that as far as the act is concerned, the act uh, does not have flaws. But in so far as laws are concerned, as long as they are aligned broadly with principle of justice, not standing the fact that there are certain flaws in it, public interest mandates that the laws be permitted to operate. And in this particular fact, I personally think that the act in question, in its very substance, acknowledges uh, what everyone knows, that is, the historical excesses of tyrants. And while acknowledging it, nevertheless says, that because the legal system is substituted by one where the rule of law governs, and the system which was prevalent in the times of empires is no longer current, says that as far as the situation at the time of independence is concerned should persist, because as far as the law is concerned, it cannot operate retroactively on past incidents, nor can it visit consequences from a different era into an era where the law on which we rely today was not in place. And as far as the communities today are concerned, to the extent that they are having access to places of worship, they are not in any way responsible for the sins of the ancestors and should be left untouched insofar as uh, the expression of and, uh, and uh, the undertaking of whatever uh, rituals and beliefs they, they actually have to undertake. So basically so you're making as, the as point... As the issue is concerned, I personally think that the Supreme Court should... That the law exists, Gaurav Bhatia, Aman Lekhi very... I, I couldn't follow uh, what? Very articulately making the point that the law exists, the law says you can't have these kind of civil suits or title suits, uh, therefore what exists must stay just the way. It doesn't take away from the reality that there was a temple there. It doesn't take away from the barbarism perpetuated by Aurangzeb. It just means that you leave things the way they are. That's the law of the land and the Supreme Court's job is to maintain the law of the land. Gaurav Bhatia. You know, uh, Amanji is always very erudite 
and I will respond to what he is saying. You know, he would definitely agree with what I am saying and I am only talking about the legal perspective of the whole dispute. Rahul, we have to remember that the constitution is supreme in our country. The constitution provides for certain legal remedies also. Now, this act, Places of Worship Act of 1991, has been challenged before the Honorable Supreme Court saying that it is unconstitutional. And on 20th or 26th of March 2021, the Honorable Supreme Court issued notice to determine whether the act is constitutional or unconstitutional. So, just assuming for the sake of argument, if the Honorable Supreme Court reaches to the conclusion that you cannot take away a citizen's right to move the court for a legal redressal and holds it unconstitutional, then I think the protection given by Places of Worship Act will go. And till the time it is there, Rahul, everyone has to abide by what Places of Worship Act says because it has not been stayed so far. Second, within the Places of Worship Act, there is specificity regarding the Ayodhya issue. Now it has been decided. There is no second issue that has been given a different pedestal. And third, there is section 4, sub clause 3, which itself talks about any monument or place which is historic in nature and also covered by the other act of Archaeological Survey of India Act. So the point is very simple. This has to be finally decided by the Supreme Court. But let's not forget that the trial court was also aware of this act as well as the notice issued. The uh, defendants moved the High Court, Allahabad High Court. The Allahabad High Court did not give them any relief as prayed for. And the Supreme Court protected the shivling that has been found there. I think we should respect the court hearing and let's wait no, of for course the we final should. Wording. No, there's no question about that. But it seems that even uh, Gaurav Bhatia has to accept, which is as clear as day, that in the manner, uh, Jayant Bhushan, that the Places of Worship Act 1991 stands at this moment, you can't alter the nature of the Gyan Vyapi Mosque. And therefore, in the law of the land, as it prevails at the time, the Gyan Vyapi Mosque must stay and it's the duty of the no, no, law and order machinery also. to maintain that. Just, just once again, let's, let's listen to Jain Bhushan. I'm going to come back to you, Gaurav, in just a moment. But let Jain respond. Yes. So, you are absolutely right, Rahul. The Places of Worship Act is a very important act which was to um, make harmony between different religions. The exceptions for the uh, Ram Bhumi, this Ayodhya thing, there is no other exception except uh, what uh, Gaurav is saying, there is an exception to archaeological monuments, etc. Now, let me just make uh, respond to that. There are two important sections in this uh, Places of Worship Act. Section 3 says, bar of conversion of places of worship, no person shall convert any place of worship of any religious denomination or any section thereof into a place of worship of a different section of the same religious denomination or of a different religious denomination. Now, there is no exception to section 3. This uh, archaeological monuments acts, etc., uh, uh, the exception is only to section 4. There is no exception to section 3. Therefore, the, the bar of conversion remains. You cannot convert a mosque into a temple. Now, insofar as the exception to section 4 is concerned, it is only for the reason because 4.1 says it is hereby declared that the religious character of a place of worship existing on the 15th day of August shall continue to be the same as it existed on that date. Now, there are very uh, uh, many old monuments which may have been temples or mosques or whatever were dysfunctional because they became protected monuments, which is why there is a proviso that, that this uh, continuation of the religious character may not or uh, affected monument. So therefore, that, that is why the exception is there. Otherwise, if it is a functioning mosque today, it will remain a functioning mosque. If it is a temple today, it will remain a functioning temple. The idea was that let the sins of the past or let the whatever is events of the past, which may have happened years ago, 300 years ago, 
not be a cause for friction or uh, enmity or animosity between different religions. Okay. Is that whatever has uh, happened uh, in the past sure. has happened. Sure, that's, that's the now idea the of the law. But is, does public opinion, is, public sentiment in, uh, in, yes. uh, in any way, Aman Lekhi, uh, willy-nilly become a factor before the courts? Because now, it's very clear from the report of the commissioners that there existed a shivling, uh, that the signs of Sanatan Dharma, and therefore, if the Supreme Court were to purely invoke the Places of Worship Act and say that therefore this uh, case cannot stand, people would say that there's a concern that there would be a, a pushback from society, that people would now be enraged, and the, would the courts need to be mindful of that? You see, as far as law is concerned, uh, sentiments uh, have, have a role, but uh, within the confines of law and not to twist the law. That said, the law itself, particularly as the Supreme Court is concerned, gives it plenary power to mold orders, that is 142. I personally think the Supreme Court has handled this matter very intelligently and extremely sensibly. What the court has done is, it has not at the outset immediately accepted what is a self-evident proposition about the mandate of the 1991 Act because it has entertained it yet. While entertaining it, it has simultaneously ordered that the shivling be protected because the question is, this is as far as the, the shivling is concerned, it will be a piece of uh, uh, immense value and significance not only for the religious sentiments of Hindus but also as a piece of antiquity. So what the Supreme Court has done is, while permitting the mosque to be a mosque and allowing the mosque to work and function as such, has yet ordered that as far as the shivling is concerned, the shivling be protected. Now the occasion for the court to say that is actually respecting the sensibilities of the Hindus, while at the same time not interfering with the rights of the Muslims. In so doing, it is balancing the competing interests which are at play, so as to ensure that as far as the sentiments are concerned, the sentiments are duly addressed. And while the sentiments are addressed, the law is not violated. And the Supreme Court has got the plenary power, as I said, the residuary jurisdiction, the, in fact, the untrammeled authority to mold relief to suit the circumstances. And I feel that uh, the bench, in dealing with the matter in the way it is, is proceeding rather intelligently, keeping uh, the very issue which you said in mind, because these matters are not matters of law alone. You cannot in any way disregard sentiment. And while not disregarding sentiments, you cannot in any way be swayed only by sentiment to disregard of law. And in the dealing with the Supreme Court has shown, it is uh, actually undertaking, it is proceeding in a manner which uh, actually should be yeah. duly complimented and commended because the balance which such, such litigation require is being duly observed. What I like about the way Aman Lakey frames his argument is that even on a television show, he talks as if he's arguing in court. And it's interesting to get a flavor of how he'd do it in court. But Sanjay Hegde, even in the Ayodhya judgment, there are references to public sentiment and faith. Raising the question, and whether somebody likes it, doesn't like it, at some level, the judges would be mindful of what could potentially happen if they just purely invoke the Places of Worship Act and say, there can be no change in the status of this mosque because it's a mosque and that's what the law says. Would public sentiment as it was in the Ayodhya case be a factor in your view? I don't think so. Firstly, please get it out of your mind that the Supreme Court has authoritatively said that a shivling in fact has been found. Sure. The words are that the district magistrate Varanasi shall ensure the area where the shivling is stated to have been found, as indicated in the order, shall be protected. So, it has only recorded a statement that a shivling has been found. There is no finding that it is a shivling, there is no finding that it is a fountain. And as Aman correctly said, the Supreme Court was very careful in its phraseology. We all get into this hashtag journalism or uh, headline aiming things. Let's just get out of that. The process is a legal process. It's careful thinking. What the courts will do, I've told you earlier that I don't really predict courts. But yes, there is the law. Courts do not officially take into account public opinion. Because if you are going to have uh, 
public opinion as your courts, then you might as well disband the court system. So sure, you know, public opinion cannot the be the court. No, no, the, because the, then there'll be majoritarian rule. Can, can, yeah, absolutely. Listen, just one minute. Let yes. me complete. Let me complete. Public opinion can and will impact parliament. Ultimately, this is a parliamentary law. Parliament in 1991 took a call. Will this parliament take a different call? And what will be the consequences? I don't know. So is that matter being discussed actively, to do its Gaurav job? Bhatia, in the in inside the BJP? I know it's being spoken of privately, but will there be a move if the case is dismissed by the Supreme Court to do away with or amend or tweak uh, the Places of Worship Act? Rahul, uh, first of all, let's not preempt what will happen in the suit or uh, what the Supreme Court would direct. Second, I am not the competent person to comment on the legislative functioning of the government. But yes, I would like to point out that there have been three orders from the trial court, the high court and the Supreme Court. The trial court, the defendant Muslim side had opposed a survey, but the trial court found that it is required and therefore it was ordered. Agreed by that order, the defended Muslim side approached the Honorable High Court. The High Court did not stay that order. And now, before the Supreme Court also, I was present in the court when the matter was heard. There was a prayer to stay the trial and the survey. The Honorable Supreme Court has made a very balanced order protecting the rights of both sides. We should wait for adjudication. And one more aspect that I would like to highlight since it has been brought up. The report, it is being said, has been leaked. So I would only like to say it is for the trial court to either still accept the findings of the report, not be satisfied and order a further survey, or reject the report. And at the same time, if it feels that inappropriate behavior has been uh, done by the advocates, the trial court may take cognizance of that. But to say that just because the report has been leaked, the veracity of the report is under challenge would not be correct. Sanjay, you want to respond to that? Because the report's been leaked, it doesn't impact the contents of the report and therefore the two matters are separate? Hey, listen. It's for, I agree with Gaurav that it, it is for the trial court to take a call. But I have known courts to be very angry whenever such events occur. I have even known a judge of the Supreme Court to threaten to, who delivered a judgment which was not signed by another judge and a counsel happened to uh, want to read it, took it out of court and the Supreme Court, uh, the, the judge in question threatened to recall the entire judgment which had some 800 crores worth of uh, excise duty running on it. So, judges do not like interference, public comment on their court proceedings. Whoever leaked that report, I know your, your, your journalist's job is to get at any, anything that is available. But whoever leaked that report would have to find it. Uh, would have to answer to the court sure. and the court may very well say look let's not get into this controversy this particular report we junk we send another set of people to do it they, they these are very many possibilities that are okay possible. in the midst of all of this a mathura court allowed today the a lawsuit asking for the removal of the shahi idga mosque which was allegedly built on the land of Sri Krishna Janbhumi. The hearing will now resume on the 26th of May. This even as a call has been given to hold a Jai Abhishek of uh, Laddu Gopal at the mosque promises. Yet another holy site locked in an interfaith tussle. After the Babri Masjid Mosque dispute in Ayodhya, which led to construction of Ram Mandir, and the Gyanwapi Mosque dispute in Kashi, now a massive row is brewing over the Krishna Janmabhumi site in Mathura, which houses the Shahi Eidgah Mosque. It's raining petitions to either remove or videograph mosques in Uttar Pradesh. Hearing a petition to vacate the Krishna birth site, revered by Hindus, a Mathura court allowed a plea to remove the Shahi Eidgah Mosque. Hindu petitioners claim that the mosque was built on the birthplace of Lord Krishna. 
by demolishing the ancient temple by Mughal ruler Aurangzeb around 1669. The petitioners argue in their suit that as devotees of the infant Bhagwan Krishna, they have the right to worship at the actual birthplace. The lawsuit is one of the many by Hindu outfits demanding the removal of the 17th century Shahi Eidgah Masjid away from the Katra Keshavdev Temple. We have come to the court of the court that the real court is the one who says the Eidgah, who should be able to do it with the Eidgah. Because we want to do it with the Eidgah, where our Eidgah was born. And the Eidgah was born in the Eidgah. कारागार को तोड़ के इन्होंने ईदगाह बनाई वो एक अतिक्रमण है आज कोर्ट में रिवीजन को स्वीकार कर लिया गया है हाँ। रिवीजन स्वीकार हो गया है और अब ये केस वापस लोअर कोर्ट में आकर के इसका ट्रायल चलेगा इसको रिवीजन को सही मानते हुए केस को, केस को सही मानते हुए स्वीकार कर लिया गया है और सही स्वीकार सही मानते हुए सभी तथ्यों को सही माना है मान्य कोर्ट ने और सही मानते हुए इसको स्वीकार करने के बाद ट्रायल के योग्य माना है केस मीन लॉयर for the Muslim side slammed the series of petitions. Look, many people have filed a petition to file a petition to file a petition. The work that a petition could be filed in a petition, the petition could not be filed in a petition. Because our name is Rosan, 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 our name is Rosan. Another temple, another mega faith fight. Will Mathura Mosque 2 yield another buried mandir? With Ashutosh Mishra in Mathura, Bureau Report, India Today. Now here's what the courts, the government and India as a country need to take into consideration, Jayant Bhushan, because this case is being heard at the Gyanvyapi Mosque in uh, Varanasi, demands being raised in Mathura, Demands being made around the Qutub Minar in Delhi, the Taj Mahal in Agra. And soon this could spiral. That uh, lawyer in that comment said, in that local region, apni political roti uh, uh, bake liye, people can say all kinds of things. You know, They will come out and make these comments. And that therefore means it might not be restricted only to Ayodhya, Kashi, and Mathura. This could become a spiral all across the country. Which is why I want to respond to your question. Will public sentiment have any bearing on the court proceedings? According to me, it should not affect what will happen. Because all these claims that uh, many temples were demolished and mosques were built by Aurangzeb 200, 300 years ago is raising religious tensions. And that has to be lowered, and therefore, we must have a quietness. Except for Ayodhya, which is very, very important for the Hindu religion, that is why it was uh, made an exception, that the remaining shall be given a quietness and whatever it is existing in 1947 must continue. Now, you, you tell me, all these surveys and all these claims and suits, etc., are they raising tensions between Hindus and Muslims or are they re reducing them? According to this, the answer is obvious. They are raising tensions. And this is why... All this raises are... tensions, it doesn't reduce them, it doesn't join society, Gaurav Bhati, it fractures society and therefore, given that it can have a spiral effect like we're seeing already in Mathura, Agra, Delhi, where will this stop? Rahul, uh, I disagree with, the, you know, the co-panelist and the reason is very simple. If a citizen has the right to move the court, be it for a title suit or for the right to pray at a certain place or challenge the constitutionality of an act, Places of Worship Act, it doesn't fracture our country. Rather, it shows the strength of our law and constitution and the faith that we have in our judicial system. And yes, if a matter is decided, it is the duty of every citizen to abide by that judgment. Rather, if you deprive a citizen from even seeking a legal remedy, I think that creates fissures in society and that is more dangerous 
for our country. Varun so, wants to know, make a point, point of view that before I conclude that just forward. because some women have gone yes. to a court doesn't in any point? way fracture our society. It just shows that you have the opportunity to go to court and seek redress. Varun, quickly, I'm out of time. Yeah, so the Ancient Monuments Act actually does put some obligation on the central government, in fact, that in situations where there is a choice, there is a chance of a conflict, there is a chance of destruction, there is a chance of a misuse, there's, there are two provisions which very categorically says, one of them in section 16, I'm going to very quickly read it out to you, a protection of places of worship for misuse, pollution and desecration, a protected monument maintained by the central government under this act, which is a place of worship or shrine, should not be used by any inconsistent purpose with its character. And the power for the central government to actually acquire and allow the same same uh, set of people to worship is un given under Section 13. Section 13 says acquisition of protected monument. If the central government apprehends that a protected monument is in danger of being destroyed, injured, misused, or allowed to fall into decay, it may acquire the protected monument within the provision of Land Acquisition Act. And if the maintainer is a protector of the monument, there are public purpose meaning of the act. Thereby meaning that if a situation like this arises, where there could be an issue of conflict or destruction, then the, then the central government does have a powers to acquire them under the Agents Monuments Act and then allow the same set of people to worship because it should be, as I read out earlier in Senator Section 16, it can ensure that whatever is the form of worshipping which has been carried out previously, that should continue in its con and they should it should not be inconsistent with its character. So it is not as if uh, the you know the people who are running the middle ground, uh, Aman Lekhi, the fact that it stays a mosque, but on certain days Hindus are allowed to come and worship on the part of the wall, which has the remnants of the Hindu temple. Can there be a creative middle solution that can be found? Is that at all feasible? A creative middle solution requires an element of maturity in the society and I personally think that the tempers as frayed and society as divided today, rational thinking is a casualty. Uh, ideally, these matters are not strictly speaking legal and as the reconciliation is concerned, the reconciliation should be rooted in the society because the issues are beyond law and bring in the element of morality, ethics as also sentiment. So I personally think uh, the courts uh, role is limited and the reach is also restricted. A solution necessarily requires involvement of the public. And for involvement of the public, there is a requirement of confidence in each other. So I, I think this has been incremental movement in that direction, where the element of confidence people have in each other and the intent to actually move as far as our destiny is concerned in a united way is the best way forward. There should be reconciliation. But reconciliation should not be seen only through the legal mechanism. In fact, the right-thinking people in both communities, and there are a fair number in both, should actually take the initiative so that uh, problems like these are addressed and don't fester. Flashpoints are not good for the country. That's an interesting argument. But there are so many diverse points of view on this. As always, on the news stack, what we're trying to do is get you sharply articulated points of view traversing a wide spectrum. We don't tell you what to think. We leave it to you, our viewers, to decide who you thought had the most compelling argument. I want to thank uh, Jayant Bhushan, Sanjay Hegde, Gaurav Bhatia, Varun Singh and Aman Lekhi for lighting up the news track tonight with the power of your arguments. Me and everyone else will await very closely what happens in the Supreme Court. Make no mistake if what's happening in Varanasi is allowed to go on, there will be similar demands and then we'll be confronted with the situation of what do we do with those other demands? Should the law stay? Should the law go? Uh, there are, there's a lot to think about very deeply because it will impact social relations in our country. So there's a lot at stake. There's also public sentiment. To what extent will the courts take public sentiment in mind? You've heard what the lawyers are saying. We'll see what happens in the court tomorrow. We're slipping into a break when we come back in a massive blow to the Congress. Former Punjab Congress Chief Sunil Jakar joins the BJP. Details on the other side. After two years of paralyzing pandemic, the world is ready to bounce back.
Will shifting power centers make this India's big moment? Risk, resilience and revival on the agenda. What's India's role in the global rebalance? India's top world watcher takes you to the front lines of the global high table with top minds from politics and business for the biggest global brainstorm, live and exclusive coverage only on India Today TV. watching India today. On a daily basis, thousands of oil spills occur worldwide in the oceans, causing oil pollution. This oil pollution in the oceans can have a disastrous effect on marine life. Most people don't realize how serious the problem is until there's a major incident at sea, such as a tanker spill or an oil rig explosion. Oil slicks have the potential to kill seabirds and marine animals, such as seals, as they drift towards the coast. Although only 10% of global marine oil population is caused by spills of this nature, the majority is generated by everyday maritime traffic, such as illegal dumping and tank cleaning, as well as onshore industrial activities. The environmental impact varies depending on location. Deep sea spills are typically smarter and easier to clean up. The oil sinks as it becomes denser, is broken down and destroyed by bacteria. Oil slicks on a rocky coast or exposed beach can have a significant impact on marine ecosystems and they can take up to a year for wave action to clear away. This oil pollution is also extremely harmful to coral reefs. Coral regeneration can take up to 10 years and is often irreversible. And pollution in mangroves or on sandbanks can cause long-term damage that lasts more than 20 years. Tonight at 9 p.m. on the news today with me, Rajdeep Sardesai. Star cricketer turned politician Navjot Singh Sidhu is sentenced to one year in jail by the Supreme Court for a 30-year-old road rage case. What does this mean for the future political career of a man who was hoping to be Punjab Chief Minister till not too long ago? Also, the Congress faces more reverses with Hardik Patel leaving in Gujarat, Sunil Jakhad joining the BJP in Punjab. After the Chintin Shivir, is the grand old party imploding once again? All that and much more on the news today. News without the noise. After two years of paralyzing pandemic, the world is ready to bounce back. Will shifting power centers make this India's big moment? Risk, resilience and revival on the agenda. What's India's role in the global rebalance? India's top world watcher takes you to the front lines of the global high table with top minds from politics and business for the biggest global brainstorm, live and exclusive coverage only on India Today TV. <laughs> You're on board the news track after the Congress's Chintin Shivir. The party has a big cause for Chinta. It's a second big leader who's quit the Congress in two days after Hardik Patel, who embarrassed the Congress and its leadership with the chicken sandwich comment and the partying jibe Sunil Jakar, one of the senior most leaders from Punjab, today joined the BJP. 
trouble continues to mount for the grand old party. The Congress has suffered two big blows in as many days, with its working president in Gujarat and former chief in Punjab leaving the party. So, Nobat I told me that. वो सिद्धांतों से जुड़ी हुई थी मैं समझता हूं कि बीजेपी के यहां आके इस भावना को कि हमारे गुरुओं संतों पीर पैगंबरों की धरती से जहां से मानस की जात सभी एक हो पहचान बे की मूल मंत्र जो दिया था उसको आगे लेके देश की अखंडता और पंजाब में आपसी भाईचारे को कायम और विकास के लिए बात की जा सके विद जाखड़ जॉइनिंग द पार्टी द बीजेपी फाउंड न्यू एम्यूनेशन टू मॉक कांग्रेस देखिए उत्तर से लेकर दक्षिण तक पश्चिम से लेकर पूरब तक कांग्रेस पार्टी टुकड़े टुकड़े मोड में है हर जगह कांग्रेस पार्टी के नेता ही कांग्रेस पार्टी के नेतृत्व पर अविश्वास प्रस्ताव पारित करके उनका साथ छोड़ रहे हैं और कांग्रेस पार्टी का टुकड़े टुकड़े हो रहे हैं हाँ कांग्रेस ने अपने आ, कुछ हट करके भी कुछ निर्णय लिए जिन लोगों को लोगों को मौका दिया बड़े प्लेटफॉर्म दिए और उन लोगों को चाहिए कि अब जो जो कांग्रेस ने उनको दिया इस कठोर समय में जो है उसका प्रतिदान करें जाखर्स क्रॉस ओवर टू द बीजेपी कम्स जस्ट डे आफ्टर पार्टीदार लीडर हार्दिक पटेल अनसेरेमोनियसली डम्प टू द कांग्रेस आफ्टर थ्री इयर्स गुजरात के अंदर मात्र हार्दिक पटेल कांग्रेस की नाराज न थी गुजरात के अंदर असंख्य युवा युवा है असंख्य धारासभ्यों एवं असंख्य नेताओं एवं कि जे पोता परिस्थिति ने एवं हदे मूकी दीधी है कि मत ने मॉग्रेस पार्टी एपयोग करने मागे ये दुरुपयोग करने मागे है समय आए इतने लोग फेंकी दे काम करे The Grand Old Party has been plagued by growing dissent amid its consistently dismal performance in state polls. The exit of two big leaders is embarrassing for the Congress as they come just days after its chintan shivir held in Udaipur aimed at reviving the party. Bureau report India today. This is where I wrap up the news track tonight. I'll have more for you tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Till then, from all of us here on the news track team, goodbye, good night. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com or call 9999892171. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com or call 9999892171. You are watching India Today.
Are you a germophobe? Do you freak out when things aren't clean? You may be able to clean things on Earth, but what about space junk? Did you know there are more than 9,800 tons of debris floating around Earth's orbit? Yes, you heard it right. Well, let us help you relax. A tow truck in space is using magnets to clean the space. The name of your space cleaner buddy is ELSA. ELSA is a small satellite fitted with a powerful magnet. It uses a magnet to clean up the debris and tows it back to Earth's orbit. While towing back, it burns up naturally on re-entry. ELSA can help clean 9,800 tons of debris floating around the Earth. Space junk is litter left behind in the orbit from the space missions. You wouldn't believe that it is travelling at the speed of 27,000 km per hour. So at this speed, even small debris could mean a huge risk. We hear about the space mission being launched every now and then, and with more than 30,000 satellites set to launch in the coming year, the space could really use some cleaning. But who made ELSA, and how does it work around space? Japanese startup Astroscale launched a model of ELSA D. It is made up of two satellites stacked together. There are two parts a flying magnetic tow truck and a smaller satellite that behaves like a piece of space junk. During the trial, they launched the smaller satellite and used the magnet to recapture it. But ELSA is not the only space cleaner. Claire Space, a Swiss startup, is also launching a technology to clean up space junk. As Earth gets more active in exploring space, cleaning solutions like ELSA and Claire Space are becoming more and more important. Do you have any fresh ideas to clean up there? Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Tonight at 9 p.m. on the news today with me, Rajdeep Sardesai. Star cricketer turned politician Navjot Singh.